Welcome to the Drunk Linux User. I'm Len. I am the Drunk Linux User. Going to go a little off topic today and discuss something called telephonophobia. Telephonophobia. And I've noticed this occurring a lot, especially with younger people. And I have my own experience with this as well. And this is about basically why are people scared of phone calls these days? And there are a lot of reasons behind this, and I'll get to those in just a moment. But I started noticing this probably about 20 years ago with people in my own family. And then I saw it spread out to other people as well. And these are people who, when they get a phone call, they're almost frozen in fear with being able to take this call and they don't want to talk and sometimes it gets a little awkward let's just be honest about that now 20 years ago the internet was a thing but it wasn't like the thing telephone calls were still pretty much predominantly the way to communicate with each other and in some respects, I think that we've kind of lost a little bit of our ability to communicate because we have become so dependent upon technology. We're using text messages primarily or things like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, um, things along that line. It's quick. It's down. It's dirty. You don't have to worry about the tone of your voice. You don't have to worry about coming up with a sentence right away that may come off as being confrontational uh, maybe you don't want to get that confrontation over the phone part of it is a fear of the unknown uh, many never answer such a call for fear of the unknown and if they happen to know the person who did call will meekly text something back like Mix, missed your call what's up a uh, recent survey which I have uh, up on another page here uh, by no means the first of its kind, found that 81% of millennials get apprehensive anxiety before taking the leap and making a telephone call. So why is that? There's lots of reasons for it. And I think one of the reasons is that during the course of our technological evolution, we have actually become... A little antisocial. Now, I'm not talking about antisocial in the way of being negative or or confrontational or things like that. What I mean is, we have lost abilities to be able to hold a conversation. I remember, and I know this is a long time ago, uh, but people used to have friends that were actually, you know, in the same room. And we're all doing, you know, maybe having a party, maybe we're playing games, or maybe we're listening to music or something along that line. But you learned to develop social skills. And this is where you learn how to be able to say things to people without putting your foot in your mouth. And you develop a sense of of body language where you can see if what you're saying to somebody is possibly making them feel a little uncomfortable, maybe pissing them off a little bit, whatever the situation is. But with that one-on-one -on -one conversation, you have those skills. Now, those skills can translate over to the telephone as well. Now, when you first start off with the telephone back in the day, uh, you're very, very nervous because it was you didn't want to sound like an idiot on the phone. And I think a lot of people still feel that way. They don't want to sound stupid. Um, you see, when uh, right here, when take uh, you see, when taking on the phone instead of texting, a person typically has to respond live and may not be mentally prepared enough to put a carefully worded response together, a prospect which is even more difficult when talking to someone you don't know. That's very, very true. But pretty much if you have an ability to understand where you're coming from to begin with, you'll be able to have those skills to be able to talk to the other person on the phone. 
Now this could be somebody who's trying to sell you something. It could be somebody that is um, maybe even just simply a wrong number. Uh, it could be a lot of different things, but in a world replete with emails and tweets and instant messages oversaturating our devices with pleading notification, the phone call feels for many like an arrow hurtling through the boundary and buffer such forms of communications normally that they normally afford us. So it, it feels like an intrusion. Now, this is, you, if you think back to the way society has gone in many, many different cultures, verbal communication and written communication has been the norm, right? So either people are writing letters to each other, sending cards, or calling somebody up on the phone. Uh, granted, um, m not many of the people that are out there are hiding, as they say right here, uh, hiding behind their sofa, texting, chatting, and never going outside where human beings are. People clearly still meet for coffee and hop on Zoom and all the other social crap. Okay. I honestly, Zoom is great, things along that line, or if you're using something like um, FaceTime or whatever, it still gives you that ability to learn how to talk with somebody and see their responses. So one of the things that I noticed when I was a young adult and struggling very hard, especially with things like bills, the, the worst calls that you could possibly get are from bill collectors. And trying to be able to get your mind wrapped around, oh my God, I owe this and I have to pay that. And, you know, that is a true struggle. And there's a point where you get to looking at that phone as something evil and something you don't want to have to deal with. Now that's different than seeing your family and friends pop up on your phone. If somebody is taking the time to call you, maybe it's important and maybe it's not. I think it would be more gracious of someone to answer the phone if their friend or family is calling to make sure that everything is going okay. Now, if you don't have time for that, the simple response is, oh, hey, you know, I'd love to talk with you right now, but maybe I can call you back a little bit later. I'm in the middle of something. And then make a point of doing that. And you can pretty much kind of gather up your thoughts a little bit beforehand when you call, before you call that person back and just try to get you know yourself maybe in a little bit of a better mental place sometimes people just want to call up and say hey did you see the game last night or did you watch that movie uh did you see the news report about fill in the blank here if you have the time and you want to interact by all means do um, there are times, and I, I do fully agree with this, that it's encroaching upon your life and you don't have the time. And it's quite all right to say, no, I didn't. Um, and if you have the time, you can say, was it any good? And then listen to the other person's reaction. Sometimes that other person is just bursting with something that they just want to share. This is social conversation kind of 101 but it seems to be something that we're lacking not only on the telephone but even face to face and i've noticed a decline in general communication skills among people quite a bit now the more relaxed everybody feels of course the conversation goes better regarding that survey this is a really really interesting page here that has a lot of information but 81 percent of millennials get apprehensive anxiety before summoning up the courage to make a call and i would say i'll probably also take a call and a lot i i can tell you from my own personal experience working at a bank working on a telephone customer service line 
after about the 15th call saying, why do I have NSF charges? Or how come I don't have enough money in my bank? And these people are mad at you for something that they themselves did. You kind of get a little gun shy about the phone call. Now that's professional. That's not personal. On a personal side, more than likely, if you're taking care of your finances, you're not going to get those calls. Yes, you might get those telemarketer calls, but now we have things like, um, you know, the the phone ID will come up, and it, if you don't recognize who that is, let it go to voicemail. It's simple, especially if you don't have the time to sit around and tell somebody repeatedly, no, thank you, bye, I'm not interested, click. The other thing is is that we do have call waiting so if you're talking with somebody important and you see a phone number pop up if it's not important or if it's a from a phone call you don't or from a phone number you're not familiar with let it go to voicemail we have these options now that we didn't have 20 30 years ago when the best that we had was call waiting and if you were talking to somebody like Maybe your mom calls up and says, um, how's your day? Um, I've been really busy today. I did all this stuff and, you know, uh, your dad's not feeling well and stuff. And, you, and you'd hear a little beep in your ear and you'd hit the flash on your phone. And somebody wants to sell you extended car insurance. Say, I'm really not interested. I'm on the other line. Um, please don't call back. Flashback. Have some of these things already in your mind. I have, like I said, I have family members as well that in the past were just absolutely terrified of answering or making a phone call. I understand the anxiety behind that. It's um, nothing has nothing has necessarily happened, but the fear of the unknown about what's going to happen and is somebody going to be confrontational with me has become an extremely prevalent force in our society. There is a lot of confrontation. There's a lot of people going around just making trouble. Unknown numbers. To get a better data set, we deliberately avoided including numbers from unknown calls, uh, caller IDs, uh, telesales, and call bots with all that other stuff. But which of the following situations make you avoid an incoming phone call? Time-consuming calls. Honestly, how do you know it's going to be time-consuming? A whiny, needy person. Turning up to an event. Someone wants a favor. Verbal confrontation. Which I'm surprised that one isn't up near the top. Uh, p other people hearing my call. Work responsibilities. Well, you really shouldn't be answering the phone while you're at work anyway if your boss specifically says keep your phones off or put them away they want you to take break times and stuff like that M more in-depth coverage of what that's all about uh, the most common excuses didn't notice it rang um, you did but that's what you're telling the other person look how huge that is 63 uh, percent other people are saying oh i had a poor signal i was in a meeting so on and so forth who are you most likely to dodge calls from? Friends. 29%. The one that really, really surprised me was parents and family at 25%. I would have thought that would have been a lot lower down the line. Um, for example, along the same lines as maybe partner. Now, I would still take a phone call from my wife over anybody else anyway. I would go out of my way to say, look, my wife's calling. I got to go and go over there. Uh, boss, 14%. Um, I suppose that depends on how dedicated you are in your job. Uh, work or colleagues, 21%. But again, families, parents and families at 25%. I just found that really, really peculiar. Um, when you break this down, you can see why people opt to hide behind emails and messages. Am I going to come across bad or say something wrong? Uh, that's kind of life. It is nice to be able to have that ability to be able to take some time and, and get your thoughts in order and come up with a great response. 
Um, and sometimes when you're on the phone, you'll say something, you'll hang up and go, oh man, I should have said this instead. Well, that's hindsight. We all know it's 2020. When you talk to someone on the phone, you can feel vulnerable as you have less time to professionally convey your opinion or articulate your reply. Unfortunately, without people challenging themselves and hiding behind technology, they risk not developing these communication skills and becoming increasingly isolated. Again, this goes back to what I said before. I think we are rapidly losing our ability to be able to communicate. And when you are watching somebody on television, when you're watching a talking head asking maybe a, a politician or somebody a certain question, that person is not answering off the cuff. These questions have been pretty much talked about in advance. We're going to talk to you about this. We're going to ask you these questions. That person has a chance to be able to come up with a quick and snappy response. And it all looks so perfect and glib. Now, maybe some of these people are that good where they can just, you know, off the top of their head, be able to come up with a great answer. But most of it's scripted. So don't don't try to compare yourself with somebody along the lines of that you might find on the television. Now, if you want to see something that's pretty interesting, um, if, if you go to maybe a live interview with somebody, you're probably still going to see a lot of scripted questions and answers. But every once in a while, you'll see some just upfront honesty that is going to make it so much worth it. But you're going to see that that person is going to take a second or two to compose their thoughts, get their head in order, and that's okay to do too. If you're on the phone, somebody asks you a difficult question, say, I really need to think about that. Um, if it's something you think you can give a good answer to in within a few seconds, 10 seconds maybe, say, you mind if I, if I take just a minute to think about that? And then try to come up with a good answer. And, and you can even qualify that by saying, you know, well, right off the top of my head, this is what I'm thinking. You can always change your mind. Nobody's going to hold that to you, especially if you come back and say, you know what? I was wrong. I really think it should be something different. And that's after, and you can let them know, this is after having an opportunity to be able to absolutely think this through I really think maybe we should take a different direction with that. Or I think you're right, I think you're wrong, whatever. So it's very, very interesting to see how things are coming. Um, people think that calls are presumptuous and time consuming and often disruptive. However, Generation Y and Z should also take the time to appreciate the mental benefits of developing these core communication skills when necessary. It's very easy to isolate yourself behind a screen, but as we know from our cell phone addiction study, there's another link, I'll leave these two links up on the page, this can lead to eroding the basic communication skills we need as humans, which can also lead to mental health issues later on. I haven't gone to this other cell phone addiction study, but you can pretty much see this, and if you want to watch some really funny and tragic examples of this, just go on YouTube or someplace and and look up people, you know, people walking into walls while they're looking at their cell phone or whatever. So we have, we definitely have a fixation on our devices. Um, in my personal opinion, I think the devices and the apps and all this other stuff, in, in some respects, are definitely designed to make you addicted to it in a way that makes you feel like you've got all the power in the world while you've got that device in your hand or the keyboard in front of you or whatever you're using. I do think communication can solve probably almost all of the problems that we have in the world. And the uh, art of communication means being able to listen to the other person, find out where they're coming from, and finding out how that matches with your situation, your thought process. And if that person is earnest enough and not just hyperbolic, then maybe a discussion, you know, and it doesn't have to be just one discussion. It can be several where the two of you can get closer and closer to where you're finding enough common ground to make things work for both of you or for everybody involved. 
my two cents American as it goes um, I just I really do see a decline in communication skills and I really do hope that there's a way that people can try to get out of it where they can feel more comfortable right now honestly if I don't recognize the phone number unless I'm expecting a call back from a client or somebody like that I won't answer the phone but in the meantime I've got voicemail I'm relying on technology as well that being said I hope that next time the phone rings you'll take the time to answer come up with some little ideas on your own about how you want to either accept the call or decline the call very very simple stuff I'm very sorry I don't have time I'm not interested um, please take me off your your calling list things along that line or oh that's pretty interesting tell me more and listen it isn't all about you it isn't all about you talking it's about you and that other person back and forth and maybe that other person a family member a parent is trying to say something that may help you out in huge ways later on down the road you're not going to know if you just let it go to voicemail and just think about how the other person feels when they try to call you and you don't answer and they get your voicemail over and over and over and then just a simple text was up um, that kind of feels like you're being diminished and it also feels like you're not important and it also feels like it's easy to get pissed off so communicate communicate the best ways you can and I'm not saying you just need to leap right into it do your level best to get yourself to be able to answer the phone and move forward Let's use our words of wisdom. Don't drive drunk. Don't drink and drive. Don't go to Amazon, eBay, or use MSN shopping all buzzed up thinking you're going to buy the latest, greatest, and coolest stuff because you're probably not. In the meantime, bottoms up. Later, dudes.